An international milestone came in midweek with David Campesi chaired off the field after Australia's victory in Italy. This was Campesi's 100th international appearance. Well, now the Australians have arrived in Edinburgh for the next stage in their tour, which includes an international with Scotland in a fortnight's time, and Campesi's been talking with John Beattie. The way I look at life is you've got one opportunity in life to enjoy it and um, one opportunity to play international sport. So I've just hung around because I enjoyed that much and I suppose I don't like working. I think this is uh, a substitute, I suppose, for going to work from nine to five and as we are professional these days, it, it is a full-time job. Has the professionalism made a difference? In the World Cup, you were talking then of possibly retiring. Yeah, uh, professionalism has changed because the players, a lot of the younger players were, have been brought up with money, so that's all I know is money. Um, obviously, it's going to take a while, but it makes a competition for positions a lot more, um, a lot harder to, uh, obviously you've got to play well every game and if you don't perform, obviously on the contract you get dropped. So it's, uh, the. I just hope that the players don't try and change that rugby is a great game to play because you enjoy it, but now you actually get paid to play it, which it is a bit of a difference. You looked as though you enjoyed the game midweek against Italy. How did that Australian team do, do you think? Well, I mean, people don't, you got to understand that um, that's the first time we've been together since seven weeks first game. A lot of guys haven't played for four weeks because the Sydney competition, Brisbane competition stopped. Uh, the last time we played together was in uh, South Africa for the Tri-Nations. So there's been a big um, delay. We've come over, you can train as hard as you like, but game preparation is not the same unless you've had a game. And I thought we did quite well. A lot of people saying like 18-13 went down, but rugby's 80 minutes. And we end up winning by four tries to one, I think it was. So, you know, it's not too bad to start off a, a, um, a tour, but at least we've got something to build on, which is very important. Talk us through this Tri-Nations and Super 12. The Northern Hemisphere look at you very enviously. You've got this incredible level of competition. Is it that good? It is. It's very, very interesting, very good. It's very hard. You're playing some of the best provinces in the world, and um, week in, week out, you're playing a test match. And that's where the competition, that's where um, the levels are very different between Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere rugby is that you know, you might play Auckland one week and you've got Transvaal the week after, so there's no easy game. And therefore it gives the players a lot more experience a lot quicker because you're actually playing the best players in the world week in, the best players in the world week in, week out, and I think it's very good. So in theory, when you come here, you're not expecting the level of competition that you've come off. No, it, it is hard because you build yourself up um, to play. If you play the All Blacks, you know how hard it's going to be. You play South Africa, you know how hard it's going to be. The Super 12 was the same, like we started last October training. Um, when you come over here, like the Italians, I mean, we've, you never take anybody easy and you, you always have respect for the opposition because they deserve it and they're, they're good teams. Uh, like Scotland, we don't know much about Scotland. The last time we played Scotland was in 94. So a lot of things have changed. And um, what you have to do, I suppose, is you've got to try and play your best rugby week in, week out, especially at this level. You've come away from sunny Italy. We've had the fire engines out covering the grounds in water. It's going to be hard for you fellas to, to produce the kind of open running rugby or is that what you want to do? No, we're, we're trying to play a style of rugby where that uh, everyone enjoys and the crowd enjoys it. It doesn't matter what the field or the conditions are. Obviously you've got to change it if it's, it's a mud heap. But again, we're trying to get the players, that every player in the team has sensational skills and that's the whole idea of it. Three internationals for you. How hard will that be and what do you know of the teams? Well, we don't know much of the teams. Uh, all we go by is videos and the Five Nations last year. So that's what we'll look at. But um, we, we know that uh, Townsend from Scotland is a very good player. He played in Sydney for a while. And, um, you know, we watched him against the All Blacks this year. So what we do, I mean, there's not much you can go on videos. Really what you've got to do is get out there and play the opposition, give them respect, and just play it as hard as you can. Disappointing for you that you're not playing the English? It is. I thought it was um, pretty disappointing like, to come all this way and England to, to be the only ones not to play us. And, uh, it's been a very hard year uh, when you're playing South Africa, New Zealand, Canada, Wales, and then you come over here and you're playing everybody except England. I mean, I think the English rugby union have got to realise that um, they're missing out. I mean, you know, the teams are prepared to play and they're prepared to tour and come over here. Like the last time we played England was in the World Cup last year, but before that was the World Cup 91. You know, you've got to get the competition, you've got to see how good you are by year in, year out by playing the best teams in the world. And yet, on the other side, many Australians come here to play their club rugby in England. What's the attraction of England in that way? Oh, money, I suppose. <laughs> what do you think? It's not because of the weather. 
Oh, no, I think there's only about two or three players over here, but obviously Mike Lyons retired and Tony Daly was retired, so, I mean, you've got to look after yourself. I mean, when you're giving your so much to the game as these guys have, if the opportunity to make some money, why not? You've given so much to the game. Just look ahead over the next few weeks for you. What's it going to mean to David Campy? I think to me is, um, now that I've played my 100th test for Australia, is to get that out of the way and, and just enjoy my rugby, just to play and try and play better rugby week in, week out and hopefully play the test matches. We've got a lot of young guys on tour, so hopefully that by the way I play that they can learn something or if they need help that we can show them give them a bit of experience because we have got some fantastic talent and tools like this they need the help of the senior players to uh, build up to be better players. You're still Matt Keen in rugby aren't you? Oh yeah, yeah it is. It's, um, I saw uh, Mr Murphy the ex-Irish fullback in uh, uh, the airport in London and he said you're still playing? I said yeah. I mean that's as I said like when I finish I'm finished rugby I don't want to play golden oldies or classic rugby I just want to play the game at the top level as long as I can and get away and say, right now I can find out what life's all about. David Campisi talking there with John Beattie and we'll have live coverage here on Grandstand of Scotland against Australia, live from Murrayfield in a fortnight's time.